Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. Today we take the first step in building the Chevelle's chassis. I'll be installing a QA1 coilover suspension system, specifically their level two handling package. So in addition to the coilovers, we'll have tubular control arms and all new multi-link rear setup and more. Before we get started, let me give you a quick look at some of the progress that's been made since the last episode. This is one of the things I'll be installing in this video. It's a custom quick performance Ford 9 inch rear end that's designed to bolt in this chassis, which if you remember from the last episode, it still had factory style spring perches on it, which is something that I just did not even think about when I was ordering all of this stuff in the first place. So to have a cleaner look once everything is bolted in the car, I had the powder coat that was on it baked off and then I cut off the spring perches, made it all nice and smooth, and had everything re-powder coated. So you can't even tell they were there, and it's just going to look so much nicer. The last time you all saw the frame, it was after it was blasted and coated in that phosphoric acid solution to prevent rusting. But since then, my buddy Joe and I sanded everything down. He sprayed it all down in etching primer and then finished it off with a hot rod black. It's a semi-gloss finish and it turned out so nice. After the paint finished curing, we brought the frame over to the new shop and set it on jack stands with microfiber towels so nothing gets scratched. I have been looking forward to this moment for a very long time. At this point, it's just a matter of starting to assemble things. There's still a whole mess of bodywork that needs to be done as well, so I'll keep you guys up to date on when to expect that content. All right, I think that's just about enough talking for the moment. A big thanks, of course, to Original Parts Group for sponsoring the restoration portion of this build, and a special thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts and Valvoline. Keep an eye out in the description below. I'll have part numbers of what's going into the car in case any of you watching these videos are thinking about doing something similar to your car. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So far, everything's going really good. The hardest part really was getting those bushings pressed in, but after that, it was just a simple bolt-on affair. What's really nice about the suspension system is that it's significantly stronger than what came in the car from the factory. I mean, everything that you see here is boxed up. The factory trailing arms were like hat channels. They were open on the bottom. So you have the tubular arms, additional tubular braces in the front, and of course the boxed up lower trailing arms. So really, really sweet setup. Now I'm gonna work on trying to figure out how to mount the coilovers. There's a specific bracket system that you have to build. Gotta drill a couple holes, but again, pretty straightforward stuff.
Well, I've run into my first major problem. So on this diagram right here, you can see the factory shock perch. Now this setup that you make right here, this bracket system um, for the coilover, attaches to the factory shock perch and these two bolt holes. And then there's a piece that goes like towards the front of the car where you drill a third hole for extra support for that piece right there. Well, this rear end is a completely different design for some reason. I'm sure the way they did this trailing arm perch is probably stronger than it was factory, but they got rid of the piece behind here to mount that third bracket. So I have no idea what I'm going to do about this. I'm, I'm really quite just dumbfounded at the moment. So I'm going to stop for today and wait for uh, Joe to come tomorrow so we can put our heads together and figure out how in the world I'm going to mount this because at this point I don't have a clue. Alright, after putting our heads together it seems that the lower trailing arm brackets are pretty similar to what G-bodies use so I may end up having to cut that outside tab off of the axle tube, which it is what it is, but I went ahead and ordered a G-body coilover mount set up from QA1. The suspension design is very similar to that of an A-body, so I'm hoping that's gonna work, but while I wait for that to come in, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my attention to the front suspension. I ended up ordering new hardware from Original Parts Group so I can mount the upper control arms, so hopefully this goes together without a hitch. All right, these are looking quite sweet. There's grease fittings on the top of all of the bushings so we can keep everything easily lubricated. That's a really nice feature. And there's bump stops built in. So at this moment, I'm going to go ahead and install the lower control arms. Some of you have probably already pointed this out by now, but I ended up putting the upper control arms on backwards, so I'm going to go ahead and get that fixed right now. I'm in the middle of figuring out how the coilovers go together, and I noticed the ball joints weren't in line whatsoever, so the one sitting on the top right here is in the correct position. As you can see, these are more in line, the bump stop is in the correct position, and the QA1 logo faces forward, which makes more sense. So I'm going to go ahead and get this figured out, get one of the coilovers on, and then I'll show you how all that goes together. That looks much better. Now, if you were going to be installing this suspension system on a car that was pretty well complete, Definitely take beforehand ride height measurements because it'll give you a good starting point when it comes to setting the baseline for the coilover and doing your adjustments going forward. I didn't do any of that because basically I'm starting from scratch so any of those adjustments and just the whole dialing in process is going to have to be done later on in the build. But for now, I'm at least going to try to get things set even at all four corners or at least as best I can and then just to go from there. All right, now let's install the front passenger coilover. So obviously to my far right, we have the two main components, the shock body and the spring itself. Now this lower perch design is for use with a factory style lower control arm. But since we have these QA1 tubular arms, we have a different bearing bushing setup that needs to go in the very bottom. So we'll take out the seat clips, replace that with that, then we can start putting on the spring seat, the lock ring. We've got these needle bearings right here that's going to sit between the spring and the spring perch, so it'll make it really, really fluid to do the adjustments later on. We have the bushings that go up into the frame, hardware, and the factory drum brake spindles. 
you can use drum brake spindles, disc brake spindles, it doesn't really matter. The disc brake spindles are cast as one piece. I'll talk about this more when I go to installing um, the Willwood brakes, but all of this has been blasted and powder coated, so it's all very, very clean. It's all pretty simple overall, so let's get to it. Another important thing to remember when installing coilovers is to coat everything in a generous amount of anti-seize. I coated the threads of the shock body, the washers, as well as those needle bearings. It's especially important when making ride hat adjustments so you don't end up possibly galling the aluminum threads of the shock body itself, and it'll just make everything easier to maneuver around when the time comes. Another really neat feature of these shocks is that you can adjust the damping firmness by those little dials right there, which is, of course, something we'll figure out later on. So here's the front sway bar. The car did come with the front sway bar from the factory, but this one is significantly more stout. I'll also be adding a rear sway bar, which we'll get to in just a moment. But as far as the front, here's everything that comes in the kit. The end links, the mounting plates, the bushings that go on the frame rails, the associated hardware, and of course, the grease. Now, when installing any kind of polyurethane bushings, it's important to grease them very well and with the proper grease, otherwise they will squeak. Now, they can still squeak later down the line, but one nice feature that QA1 did here, which I really, really like, is that they added grease fittings. So, just like the bushings for the control arms, Greasing the chassis components is just going to be part of regular maintenance, so we won't have to worry about that stuff over time. And with that, the front suspension is all together. So now let's work on fitting the rear sway bar. The rear sway bar actually bolts onto the lower trailing arms. As you can see, there's already a pair of holes so you can feed the bolts through. The frame rail was in the way of this one, so I had to drop this end of the trailing arm, but this is a pretty straightforward process. I swear I am not on my A game today. I try to be a little bit more prepared than this. I don't know what's going on, but anyway, I put the lower trailing arms on backwards so the holes are too far back. The sway bar is supposed to set just ahead of the rear end and it's, it's not working out too well for me. So I'm gonna switch everything around and be right back. Now you're supposed to be my extra pair of eyes so I don't make stupid mistakes like this. Where were you on that one, boy? It's okay, go take your nanite. night Silly thing. I really like how this sway bar setup went together. 
between the hardware and this little spacer plate right here filling the gap in the aluminum blocks. It's just a really nice setup and it feels very solid. When it comes to swapping in the new powertrain, I'm actually going to be using a complete LS swap system from Hooker Blackheart. I've got some links to some of the parts that I'm using down in the description below. In theory, all of this stuff is supposed to go together to make it almost bolt in, or at least have everything go in with minimal modifications. They have two different style of LS motor mount conversion brackets. These are the forward mounts, which should require less modifications to the transmission tunnel with using the 4L80 transmission that I have. So let's go ahead and get these mounted and then we'll talk about the transmission cross member. These adapter brackets are actually designed to accommodate 4th gen F-body mounts if anybody was curious. So these are in, now let's go ahead and move on to the cross member. These cross members are designed to accommodate a lot of different transmission options when it comes to an LS swap. Depending on which transmission you want to go with, you might have to do additional modifications like transmission tunnel clearancing or cutting or something like that. Like I was saying before, this particular setup that I have is designed to adapt a 4L80 transmission. And with the forward engine mounting brackets that I just installed, I should only have to do some focused trans tunnel clearancing. So just popping it in in certain spaces, but we'll see how all of that works. But it's just a matter of putting some brackets and nuts and bolts together, so let's get to it. This looks awesome. All right guys, I finally have a solution for mounting the rear coilover. Like I said, this bracket setup from QA1 wouldn't work on the quick performance rear end that I have. It's just a little bit of a different mounting setup here. I thought that this portion right here might be similar to a G-body, but I tried some G-body lower mounts and the angles were just a little bit off, so that wasn't gonna work. So I called quick performance and we went over some ideas and the solution was this. Very simple, yet very effective. Now let me take you to the other side of the car and show you what it's gonna look like bolted up. So the little bracket bolts to the hole in the bottom of the trailing arm perch. And I may have to do some other adjustments. I still have to put the coil on, may have to shim this, not sure yet, but the initial test fit works. Everything bolted up just fine. And mounting it this way is going to static drop the car a little bit from the get-go, but I had planned on doing that in the first place and then we can fine tune it with adjusting the coil when the time comes. But, you know, big, big thanks once again to Quick Performance for helping me get this figured out and for getting me these brackets super, super quick so I can finally finish this video. I'm pumped. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting everything together and uh, we'll see how it turns out. And with that, everything's finished. It would have been nice to have the extra adjustability of the QA1 bracket system, but being that we have a unique situation going on here, I think this worked out pretty good. And I don't plan on dropping this car a ton anyway, so it's gonna work out just fine. But I did end up shimming this lower bracket just to give some more space between the coilover and the rear end assembly and it put everything more in line between the bottom and where the top of the coilover mounts. So it looks awesome. Now I just have to work on cleaning up all of the extra anti-seas because it seems like whenever you use anti-seas it's just a matter of time before you start becoming a tin man and that stuff just goes everywhere. So I'm gonna work on doing some cleanup but as far as the suspension and everything it's all together.
These coilovers went together pretty much the same as the front with the exception of the top being that we don't have an upper spring pocket back in this location. There's another plate that sits on top of the spring that sandwiches the spring between the lower mounts here. Well everyone, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like down below because it really helps the video a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because of course, there's always a lot more content where that came from. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.